I'm Kirby, and on more than one occasion, I've been told that I am not what people will call funny. But despite this, while sitting through AP US history, I realized that maybe that isn't true. And this piece, which isn't entirely a true story, is entitled A History Lesson. Listen up, juniors. I'm going to be very serious today. We have a lot of work to do, and we must finish it, Miss Nessa Lester states from the door of the classroom. She purses her lips and tries to stand up as tall as five foot two can go, as a way of telling her students that she isn't joking. We all stare at her for five seconds and return to talking. It's 8.15 a.m. on a Wednesday, and this room already stinks, stuffed with sweat. I can't quite comprehend why it smells this way when class and school started only three minutes ago. I pinch my nose and stare at the fallacious sign above the smart board that reads in vibrant purple and white letters, Linda Nessa Lester's class, where work always gets done. Yeah, right. We hardly ever get anything done in AP American history. But that could all change today since she's serious. Instead, the sign should read, wear deodorant. Dove, secret, Gillette, it really doesn't matter. Just please do not put the rest of us at risk. Anyway, you know those people who always say what's on their mind even when it is not at all appropriate? Well, Miss Nestle is one of those people. That's what we call Miss Nestle Esther, even though she's not a fan of Nestle chocolate and does not want to be associated with a company that's a disgrace to humanity. But Miss Nestle Esther is far too long a name to have to say on an everyday basis. I mean, could you imagine what that would sound like? Miss Nestle Esther, can I go to the bathroom? Miss Nestle Esther, can you repeat that, please? Miss Nestle Esther, can you go back one slide? So it was settled. Miss Nestle was her new inevitable nickname. You see, here's my theory, she says. Nestles are a lot more sugar than they are chocolate. What about Godiva, Miss Nestle? What about Godiva, Nori says. Correction, Nori doesn't say this. She practically yells this from across the room, waving her arms about for what reason I don't exactly know. Godiva's okay. It started in Belgium, you know, Miss Nestle Lester states. That's what I like the rich Belgium chocolate. Oh, how I love Belgium. It certainly reminds me of the good old days. The good old days? I thought you said we had work to get done, Amber questions, eyeing the clock. It's 8.30 AM. We do, and we'll get to it. But just let me tell you about when I was a young college student, she responds. I spent one of my semesters studying abroad in Belgium. I met a dreamy looking fellow named Lucas, who told me that my eyes were as creamy as chocolate. He bought me a chocolate bar that day, and the rest was history. Well, some kind of history, just not AP American history. The clock reads 8.45 AM. You know, everyone around the world hates our chocolate, right? Ugh. It's Nori again. I know I grew up in a Christian household and I go to church every Sunday and should be the good person God would like me to be, but when Nori Collins talks, it's kind of hard not to want to shove a sock in her mouth. I'm desperate. <laughs> I wish Miss Nessa Lester would interrupt and actually teach us about Jackson's presidency or wherever we're up to in the curriculum. But Nori continues. I don't blame them. America always feels the need to stick its nose in other people's business. France hates us, Spain hates us, India hates us, Germany hates us, even the 800 people who live in tiny little Vatican City hate us. Okay, Nori, thanks for sharing your thoughts, Miss Nestle responds as sweetly as possible. But now Justin, also known as the boy who's always half asleep, wakes up enough to burst out laughing. I'm glad you find me so amusing, Justin. I always thought I could be a comedian in my next life. And now, since I have your attention, perhaps you wouldn't mind answering the following question. What main law do we abide by in our country? Miss Nessa Lester asks. Silence. Wait, what? Actual silence in first period AP US history? As the clock ticks on, I feel the urge to contact Guinness World Records because I'm pretty sure we just broke some kind of record. I smile as I imagine a picture of me and sadly my other smelly classmates on a glassy page in a book. Well, hello, aren't you going to answer her question, she interrupts, she being Nori. The clock reads 9 o'clock AM. Um, 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 Justin stutters. You said, um, three times already. Please don't tell me you're gonna say it a fourth. That's Lexus. 
Correction, that's loud mouth Lexus, and loud is definitely an understatement. She sounds like those leaf blowers that always wake me up early on Saturday mornings. How many leaves possibly need to be blown at 7 a.m.? Anyways, Miss Nestle, you know what I just realized, Lexus acts? You got a haircut. You look so much better now. The bob really helps play up your older features. The air in the room begins to grow thicker. Now, Miss Nessa Lester is far from the oldest person I've seen, but she's got the whole I just became a grandmother vibe going on with the crease skin on her face and the heavy bags underneath her chocolate brown eyes. What exactly are you implying here, Lexus? Did I not look good before, Miss Nessa Lester questions? I'll have you know that back when I was your age, I was the hottest little lady around town. Cackles and snorts quickly fill the room. Go ahead and laugh all you want, but your Miss Nessa Lester was Baldwin High School's prom queen back in 83. I went with Parker Hay. Miss Nestle, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's 9.10 now and we still haven't gotten any work done, Amber breaks in. Well, that's because you all never seem to be on task. Next time, I suggest you save your stories for the lunchroom. And since you guys didn't behave, today's lesson has now become a homework assignment. Enjoy. 9.15 and class is dismissed. As we leave, Amber asks me, what was the answer? To what, I reply. The question about US law, Miss Nestle asks Justin. Well, I say, we're a constitutional monarchy and our judicial system is based on the Napoleonic Code. She frowns, that doesn't sound right. Oh, my mistake, I apologize. I was too busy thinking of Belgium.